Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back. I am back here with the same connection application that we've grown so fond of these last few videos. Um, after implementing Facebook, Twitter, and Touch ID and Face ID sign-in, um, I thought of at least one more thing that we can do to it. Um, I'm not sure if this will be the last video or every time I think it's the last video and then we just keep coming back for more. But um, this time, what I want to do is implement something that I've just implemented on a personal project that I'm working on, another application that I'm just working on in my free time. Um, and it's something that I've seen in a few applications and I'm, I can't quite pinpoint exactly where and which applications I've seen it in, but that's to have a video playing in the background, um, whether it's a splash screen or the sign in user screen. Uh, you can sort of imagine like kids playing in the grass or if this is a, a connection app for finding someone to go out with like a dating like a dating type app you can imagine people meeting each other or eating dinner around a candle candle at dinner you know what i mean so uh, actually i found it uh, not exactly obvious how to do it and I'll, you'll see in a few minutes here um so i i you add a video player basically in the background and the thing that's kind of tricky is the sizing how to get the video to be properly zoomed and to fit the screen um, so let's just dive right into it okay uh, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use this video player package um, so go ahead and copy the dependency okay so now we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and restart the app from zero. I'll be back after it restarts. Okay guys, we're back. The video player has been successfully added in our dependencies. Um, while we're in the pub spec, um, I didn't think of it until it was too late. Let's go ahead and add a video asset to our assets folder. Um, close out of the pub spec. Okay, so now here we are in the menu frame file. And the menu frame we defined was the sort of the, the frame. That's why we called it that. The, the, the frame that encapsulates all of the rest of this. The icon, the text, and then a, a page controller, a page view here. Um, so what we're going to do is we want to turn this into a stack. Okay, we see that nothing has changed. That makes sense. Just to test the the theory, let's go ahead and, well, eventually we need to change the background, right? We can't have this gradient anymore because that'll just cover the video completely. So what we need to do is find where we've defined that gradient. Okay, so now you see the red container that is now being, is the lower, the lowest widget in the stack. I had to change both the material and container colors to be transparent in order to, to see through them and down to the container below. So that was a worthwhile test because we need, um, when we're debugging later, if we can't see the video, we would have been asking ourselves, why can't we see the video? And that's why we do these simple tests where you just add a container with a solid color. Okay, so the, but what do we really want here? We want to have a video player widget, basically. We could type it all here, but I prefer to create a new file. So let's do that. Okay, and now that we've created our video widget, let's go back to the package and let's take a look at the example code that they give us. Okay, so I've copied and pasted their code and that, now I'm going to make a few changes that are more appropriate for our application. For example, we're not going to be using a network 
file. We're not going out to the internet to find a file. We're going to use one that's right here in our assets folder. So let's make a few changes to this code. Okay, so now all I've done is I copied and pasted the code. I changed this to a video uh, player dot asset, and I've removed the fact that this was returning a whole application, and we just want to return the body of what was contained in that body, which was this center um, with an aspect ratio and a video player as its children. The next thing that we want to do is to um, we're going to leave this set state because you see there's a comment here saying that it will show the first frame after the video is initialized. So we're okay with that. But there are a couple of things that I want us to do here. And one of those things is to set the volume. Just for our purposes, we're going to set the volume to zero. There's a couple more options like set looping. Set this to true if we want the video to loop and to keep playing over and over again. And then I want it to actually play automatically. I don't want to wait. I erased in the code, there was a button to play and pause. I erased that and I just want us to play immediately. Okay, so the next step is going to be to add this widget to our stack that we created back in the menu frame. So instead of this red container, let's get rid of it and replace it with our video widget. Okay. Hit save. And I've just remembered something that's going to have an impact on the video, is that this does not actually run in the iOS simulator. This video player is not functional on iOS simulators. So I'm going to pause the video and come back either with an Android simulator, or I will screen record my my actual iPhone that I have here, and I'll find a way to put that in the video. That'll be what is up, guys? I'm back. Um, after a little bit of a delay, I rarely use the Android emulator, um, but shout out to all of my Android fans out there. I am more of a iPhone and Mac guy, but uh, apparently the simulator for iOS does not allow us to show the videos. So here we are with a Pixel three a pixel three i don't know my android phones why am i even trying um anyways um in the meantime when i was trying to get this thing working uh, i did have an error in my console saying that the minimum sdk version was between some of the packages that i've added notably the secure storage i believe there was a difference between the minimum sdk version and i had to go here into my build.gradle under Android app um, source potentially here in the build.gradle and I had to up the minimum SDK version to 18. Otherwise it was not working. Uh, just a little info in case you guys are running into that same error. Anyways, um, now we can see uh, in the simulator, it's my computer is pretty old so it's struggling to render, but you can see that there's the video um, in the background, the fireworks, and you can see it's moving. So it is a video, it's not a photo. Uh, it's just that my computer is extremely slow. We can see that it's not showing in full screen as we wanted. So let's dive back into the video widget. And if we look here, you will see that by default in the, the suggested code that they gave us, they wrapped this video player in an aspect ratio. Um, so that's good if you want to keep the video's original aspect ratio. Normally, that is that is what we're looking for. But for our purposes, we want to sort of zoom in on this video and blow it up full screen. Uh, we don't want to distort the video, but we also don't want to keep it in this black frame here. So this was the part that I found sort of complex and interesting. That's why I wanted to create this video is how do you get it to, to actually show how we want it? So one of the things that I tried to do was, instead of using this aspect ratio widget, is to create a sized box.
Okay, so I did a hot reload, and now we can see that while we've succeeded in getting the video to blow up and be the, both the width and the height of the device, um, maybe it's not too obvious to you guys. I'm not sure how how well you can see, but the, the video has not kept its original aspect ratio. It's sort of squished. And while that may not be a big deal with fireworks, it would definitely be a big deal if there were something more recognizable in the video, like people or anything really. Fireworks, it's kind of easy to hide the fact, but um, this was what I found to be the most challenging thing. You know, I tried I tried using a sized box. I tried using sizedbox.expand. Uh, nothing really seemed to give me exactly what I was looking for. So... Saying that, I'm going to show you guys the solution that I found. Okay, so now what we've done is we've we kept our sized box, we added a fitted box, so we can define the fit as a boxfit.cover. And we've implemented a layout builder so that we have access to the constraints. And that's going to be key for what we do now. What we're going to do is use the constraints to define the height and the width of this sized box. So it's not at all clear why this works, at least not to me. But for some reason, this is the solution that seemed to work, at least for my applications. I realize that actually fireworks are not the best example for you guys to notice the difference between whether the video was distorted or not because fireworks can be all shapes and sizes. But I encourage you to use your own videos and you'll see very clearly that the difference between what we started with and where we are now is night and day. And it's pretty cool, right? Like I said, this was for a project of mine that I'm doing on the side. It took some time to realize how to get this working and I figured I would just share it with you guys in case this is something that you'd like to implement inside your applications. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot again for you, you guys for spending time with me for, I don't know if you're learning to code or you're just looking to, to pick up some new, some new tricks to have up your sleeve for your applications. Uh, I appreciate you guys checking out the video. Please do hit like and subscribe if it's something that interests you and you want to see more of because I'm going to keep cranking these things out. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.